All right. Greetings and welcome to a live exploration. Uh, again, I'm joined by Lucius Aurelian. Welcome. Thank you, Old World. It's great to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. I've uh, really been enjoying a lot of what you're putting out on your channel. Um, sure beats Netflix, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is that a high compliment or not? <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, at least for being real. <laughs> It's not a high bar these days to uh, surpass what they're offering us in those uh, streams. But uh, Yes, I agree. <laughs> all right, I'm going to uh, share a screen to show the viewers your channel. I'm sure most of the people are uh, familiar with it, but if you're not, um, I do have the link in the description as well for people that want to, uh, to check out what you've got to offer, which is quite a bit. Uh, and I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat here as we go along, and I'll be sharing comments um, on the screen to try to keep people involved. Um, if you're watching um, the replay, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, get yourself involved in the, the comment section. Right? We want to we want to push this information out there and get people interested, get people looking. That's that's my goal. So uh, please interact. We really enjoy that. Absolutely. Okay, on this exploration, we have a two-parter. We're going to be um, starting with a little uh, adventure around North America, looking at some of the old world buildings um, that are uh, historical anomalies as far as I'm concerned. And then the second half, but we're going to go about 45 minutes on that half. Second half, we're going to try to get into um, Ukasar Castle area in Cappadocia, Turkey, and, and what looks like the... Uh, result of a cataclysm as far as i'm concerned and aurelian i don't know i think you're sort of in the same boat there oh yes and uh, we're going to expand that search as well to other areas okay so i'll start with this quote i thought it might be a good way for us to uh break the ice the first step in liquidating a people is to erase its memory destroy its books its culture its history then have somebody write new books manufacture a new culture invent a new history before long, the nation will begin to forget what it is and what it was. The world around it will forget even faster. I thought that was fairly telling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they've expedited that process now with the internet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I feel like we're uh, we're in a, this uh, counterculture war. I feel like this research is very much the counterculture of our age right now. No doubt about it. Okay, so let's jump into it. Um, let's start with uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I have the Pabst building circled as the first uh, structure to look at. Oh yeah, then we have that uh, classic old world roof on that and that telling style that you see all over the world is remarkable with. Yeah, right, well. Uh, Bavarian styling, maybe, what would you, uh, um, if we were to label that, some sort of... You know, it would be, it would probably be, mm, if they would say some sort of revival style of, you know, they, they wouldn't call this gothic, but I'm sure they'd have some other name for it. But you see it with a lot of the train stations up in your neck of the woods in Canada, where they say they, where they use this style. <laughs> yeah, because it's just so easy to build in that, in that manner. <laughs> Piece of cake. It's really the root of what my research at coming at it from a, a carpenter's perspective and the difficulty in, in pulling off this type of uh, construction, even in the modern day, is really what got me into all this stuff. And um, For me, it's easy to see that uh, there's something wrong with the, the story, but maybe people that haven't been involved with that, maybe they're willing, they don't know, right? So they think, oh, it's all just beautiful buildings and they worked hard and all the rest of it. But I think there's much more to the story. Well, I think that's a lot of it. I also think it comes from conditioning, academic conditioning, professional conditioning, socialization, education. You know, we're taught not to question. If you research something, that's the final answer and don't ever question it. Yeah, that's a that's a great point too, right? Uh, there are those that question and that those that uh, don't. And there seems to be really a divide growing in our society along those two lines these days. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's look a little bit about this building. Um, I've just done some snipping and clipping. Um, we have an architect, Solon Spencer Beeman, sure, 1853 to 1914. Um, involved with the Pullman Company, that'd be the Chicago um, area 
rail cars, I believe, Pullman. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Uh, Paps building 14 story, 235 foot tall neo Gothic high rise filled with Flemish detailing. Oh, there we go. Flemish detailing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered what uh, they were going to say. <laughs> yeah. The oh, magnificent granite arch, of course. Yeah. And I think they say it was the tallest building. Here we go. It's tall building. Um, Time would not be kind to the Paps building. And I'll show you a few visuals I found of this building. Um, not a lot, though. It's a bit of a ghost, to be honest with you. Um, oh, did we get a timeline? Let me just go, jump, jump back here of this construction. That's another thing. The vagueness of the timeline really bothers me um, on these things. Well, they really seem to throw that one out thick, especially for places like Milwaukee, where it's very clear that they had a lot of structures standing when they first came there the so-called yeah. settlers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a timeline for the construction of it, so I think they're just giving us a start date on the year, and apparently that's good enough for most people. So well, there it is 1890s, again. 1890s, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a beauty with all the detailing, especially when you go to the higher portions of it. And these ones are really um, <laughs> sticking in my mind these days, the cupola with the point um, as it relates to the whole dirigible air travel potential of the old world um really jumping out at me these days mm. well it's funny if you have uh if we're looking at the milwaukee city hall what they call those on the milwaukee city hall <laughs> yeah they say it's a beer stein they seriously say that it was designed to resemble a beer stein because of wisconsin's reputation of being a hard drinking state <laughs> the joke's on you yeah that's, precisely. that's how that feels to me <laughs> <laughs> it's a blue stein see we built it that way we knew what wisconsin was going to be back then <laughs> <laughs> give them enough, enough beer and they won't be able to remember any of this that's how i look at that narrative <laughs> encourage it push it in society and uh they'll forget everything exactly this is what they did to this building over time oh gosh wow i guess they thought that was a, a nicer i guess i don't know I'm sure they have a narrative that it was dangerous up there and it was going to fall over, so they had to adjust the top. But uh, I don't believe that. Yeah, we need to need to induce some nice uh, 90 degree angles there because that always increases the beauty of a building. It's it's so obvious the uh, the dressing down of these buildings. It's so obvious when when you get into this research how often they do it, how consistent it is. And how difficult that must have been just to sustain that narrative. It's unbelievable. Well, and then that, like you said, that has to do with all the conditioning and you can get right into your poisoning of our food supply and then it's the introduction of the television. They really had to keep the, the, the boot on our neck, I think, to keep this narrative intact. That's how I see it. You know, well, we started the 20th century with two world wars and the Great Depression and many other major events that kept everybody spinning, supposedly. Yeah, we were definitely, we were definitely traumatized, you know, co collectively. Um, yeah, so it can be traumatic for people to even entertain these possibilities. You know, you, some of the reactions I get, the comments on videos, um, they feel that way, like they're really having trouble accepting it, but they want to, they know there's more to the story as they see these visuals, but it's very difficult for people to accept uh, the lie in some cases. Well, it's just, it's the matter of repetition. So mm -hmm. well, that's a nice figure there. This is Captain Frederick Pabst, um, a statue of him. This is the Pabst building, right? So we have the narrative of the Pabst family. I don't want to get too deep into this gentleman himself. I do want to share a few more visuals of some of the structures with his name attached to it. Before I do that, I'll show you one more of the demolition that went on of this building, the Pabst building. Yeah. Yeah. 60s, I think. Yep, that seems to be that time frame where they had the quote unquote urban renewal going across the Midwestern United States, especially where they were eradicating a lot of these buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. There's a sadness to it for sure um, when I see this stuff. But uh, let, let me show you the brewery. Have, have you have you seen the brewery, the Paps brewery? Oh, yes, I've seen the brewery. Another massive castle compound that looks like you could house tens of thousands of people there. <laughs> How many stories do you need in all these structures to, to brew beer? 
Oh, you, you know, you just, you need to brew a lot of beer and you need to make sure you got a lot of space to do it and a lot of different buildings to do it because, you know, you need an administrative building for the manufacturing building, right? <laughs> this, is, and it, this is an immense structure. And I see these all over the States in different forms. And they just to blow my mind, the size of these, these places, these industrial factories, I guess you could say. Well, and one would think it would just be a lot easier to establish a brewery with one, maybe two stories, but I would think one and then just stretching it out over the area, especially with the limitations they supposedly had at the time. Oh, no, we're going to build vertical and there you go. Have about two or three smokestacks with it and many towers. It, it, yeah, it really makes no sense. Yeah, here's a here's a photograph of a part of that area. And you really get a sense of age here, how old these must be. Mm. you know i really like this this is very this would be a very difficult construction right here to build oh, these, yeah. these these little little uh roofs on the dormers fairy tale towers that you see all over the place oh, yeah. yeah milwaukee's incredible and I, I have a video coming out um there's just so much milwaukee has so much to offer it's going to be a long one i know it is but uh amazing place i'd love to go there someday it's an interesting place to be in, especially when you consider the fact that uh, you're connected to Chicago, more or less. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The urban sprawl connects to Chicago and Kenosha, which was <laughs> featured in the news quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Know. So with urban sprawl, basically you're saying it's all one big metropolis now. It is. I mean, there, there's a few breaks between it, but it's very minimal. I mean, you drive down there and you're really just constantly along a city that runs right along Lake Michigan all the way north to mm. south. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it looks like to, all, even on the maps when you see it. This is the, the Pabst Mansion, another yeah. building attached to this gentleman's name. Now, there is a good house for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. And again, is that Flemish now or is that Bavarian? What would they say about this one? Right. <laughs> I, I think I recall they said both about this one. I think they said it was Renaissance Revival and Flemish Revival. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> I've kind of got a lot to learn in the architecture field, you know, with the uh, the definitions of these these places. Yeah. It'd be so confusing. Uh, it just seems like it's arbitrarily assigned, but sure, whatever they say. <laughs> sure does. This would be the Paps Theater next to the, is it the City Hall? I think you mentioned that building. Um, I think that's the City Hall. Yeah, I think they have the, the clock tower. Yeah, that's the City Hall. Yeah. Because this is a big arch at the bottom of it. Yeah, it's absurd. It's magnificent structure. Magnificent. Okay, so that's our little, little venture into Pabst. Um, let's jump over to... Uh, we'll stay in Milwaukee and we'll go to the St. Jehoshaphat Cathedral. Oh, this one's got quite a tale to it. I know you're familiar with the tale as well, if you'd like to uh, <laughs> share a little bit. Well, first and foremost, they say that this was built for the Roman Catholic population of Poles, Polish people that had come over to Milwaukee from Poland. And they built this in the late 1890s. And the first big red flag is the, the mighty pillars on it, the columns. They claim to have gotten them from the old federal building in Chicago. Right but here? the problem is, yep. The problem mm -hmm. is when you look at the federal building, it's the predecessor to the more famous Chicago federal building that you see in just about every researcher's channel because it's such a remarkable building. Mm -hmm. But the original one didn't have any columns in it, not inside, not outside. You cannot find those columns. Is that's it, I think. Yep. No columns to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they probably took the rectangular ones here and just shaved them down to make them circular. That's an easy well, task. Well, why not? Then threw them on a train and then hauled them up there. A piece of cake. We could do anything in the 19th century. And don't question it. <laughs> this was so absurd. I do have it in writing here. Um, let's see. Yes, this uh, Father Grutza at the time. Um he got it. He got a smoking deal on on the salvage material from that building. Thousand tons. <laughs> yeah, he only, it was only twenty thousand dollars. How could you not buy it? You're losing money not buying that. <laughs> <laughs> Had it delivered to Milwaukee on five hundred railroad flat cars. Nice. <sighs> and then per, where parishioners were waiting to begin construction, not skilled tradespeople. I'm sure there supposedly would have been some, but parishioners. Well, and it gets, it gets even better when they say that they had to modify the architectural design on it based on where they acquired this material. So, yes, parishioners and the poor built this mighty edifice. <laughs> I, I love it. Let's 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 get into some some of the visuals here uh, on the interior. Well, I'll go old. 
and it's what's funny too and I, I i looked this building up a couple of years ago and i didn't find much in the way of construction photos and now i'm seeing construction photos of it which is always an interesting thing it's like they've been made available over the last year or so for us to, mm. not, we'll, we'll look at those as well Here, here's one actually let's look at one. Oh yeah there's a great looking photo it's actually you can if you look closer you can tell it's a drawing and what's this what's this supposed to be a line <laughs> a line of people the, yeah. it's the parishioners and the poor lining up and proud of their achievement as they're about to go and construct the dome <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh and I, you know i'm seeing a lot of uh, problems with these uh construction photos you know as you zoom in closer you get to you can really tell that it's not uh not a photograph that has been doctored so good luck well, there guys this this phenomenon that you called out has been noticed where they were looking at buildings from the world's fairs and now ever since those became more known now all of a sudden you have availability of all these photos that were not available before of construction allegedly yeah it feels like a panic mode really it's uh, like okay like they're playing catch up pretty much i didn't you, think you people think would be it, looking into it well, and uh, there, there's a church nearby to this called Holy Hill. I did an earlier video on that. And I mean, they call that a basilica as well. But let's be honest, this is a cathedral and that's a cathedral. And there were yeah. no construction photos of that one either. And they supposedly built that in the late 1920s. And yeah, right. That should be an era of all sorts of photographs. <laughs> yeah, one would think. I would nope. imagine. Nope. They got a nice model of it, though. So maybe that's all you need. <laughs> Here's the pastor. Er what? Erhard Brielman. Oh no, maybe the funder of it, Brielman. No, this is the architect. Though. I'm sorry, the architect. Erhard Brielman. Yeah. Uh, let's look. Like... Let's look at the interior. Oh, hold on. Do we have it? Uh, I think it's a five or six year timeline on construction here. Yeah, they uh, say they... they threw it up pretty quick. Yeah. 80, 1896 to 1901. So that's five years, uh, and they were able to do this. With unskilled labor, parishioners, and the poor. Incredible. Well, they had God on their side, so you can't <laughs> count that out. I know. What was I thinking? <laughs> this is absolutely absurd. When I saw a building like this sitting in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the type of stuff that drew me into the research. Like, this does not fit. No. And yeah. what's the purpose of the intention behind it? I mean, I'd almost feel better if they just tried to say that it was some sort of divine miracle that established this building. That would be more credible. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thin storyline is, is it gets old, you know, and they have an explanation for the painters in here as well. I think they have an art school named after the supposed painters in Milwaukee as well. <laughs> so, Come on but, over and paint the church. <laughs> I want to say a quick hello to everybody in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on it as uh, Aurelian and I have our discussion here. I'll try to highlight your uh, your comments as as we go to keep you involved. Hope you're enjoying it so far. If you are, like, share, sub, all the rest of it. You know the you know the drill. Um, here, there's another view. Wow, just the. <laughs> That those windows and the designs with those windows and the portals, as you could call them. Yeah, yeah. My um, my research right now, I'm getting into a little bit of the cymatics of it and the e harnessing of the ether and and how useful these rosette style, um, um, I don't know what you call those, like coffering. Um, mm. How all all that is a part of that the harnessing of the energy. Of course, the windows, the pipe organs, and all the rest of it. Yep. And it's yeah. all laid out the same way in every single structure, so that's no coincidence. Exactly. It's too it's too identical. What do we have here? I don't know if this is supposed to be a deconstruction of the old one or looks like it's a deconstruction of the old one, although who <laughs> knows how that photo's been altered. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that I don't know how that one slipped in there, but here here's an actual visual of the supposedly you know, I showed you the Chicago Post Office and Custom House. This is its predecessor, apparently, before that one. <laughs> so the first one, I guess. I don't know if it's the first one. That's what but they tell us. In the one that doesn't have any columns inside or out. <laughs> so this would be the predecessor to that one, apparently. Ridiculous. Here's a construction photo for you of the cathedral. Kind of like, reminds me of the construction photos I saw of many state capitals where you just have all these blocks laying out all over the place and everyone just kind of standing around. 
Well, mm. my concern is I hope to have at least two people lifting these at a time because that's hard on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's move on. Let's let's keep. Actually, I'll, one more of a statue. There's there's Saint Jehoshaphat up at the top of the uh, cathedral there. Hmm. You, you know, and you have to wonder, like, with these statues, and you can see certain modifications on them. Like, I've noticed that with the statues from all the soldier and sailors monuments we have across the United States, it looks like there's some sort of modification to have it fit the narrative. You know, they put the put the little staff with the cross on it, and you have to wonder who was that really? Who was that really depicting? Yeah, there's a texture and a refinement um, difference. In, in a lot of these alterations that you see sometimes. So we might see that in your, actually I'll show you that in the Woolworth. It's a good example. Um, we're gonna jump over to the Woolworth building in New York. And here it is. Are you familiar with this guy? Oh yes, quite familiar still, with this guy. Still stands, right? <laughs> hmm. I, I, I'm kind of enamored with the New York skyline as well. The old world New York skyline. It's, it really is quite spectacular. Well, this and place. that's something that's something else that happened in the 1960s. There seemed to be this race to get all of these brand new skyscrapers built in New York City from then on. You know, like you have the two towers. They were built in that time frame, late 60s, early 70s. And it mm -hmm. seemed as though the intention was to really obscure a lot of these beautiful older buildings that were there. If you look at a photo of the skyline from just say 1908 or something, it's a completely different story. Yeah, so actively um, trying to alter the the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. A little bit about the Woolworth Building. I'm just gonna share the blurb here. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's a two-year construction timeline they've given us: 1910 to 1912. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. I don't want to get into the other details because the narrative sort of repeats itself. But I want to share some visuals here. Here's the here's a rendering of the top of this building. <laughs> <laughs> it it does appear though as it's a similar style to what we just looked at with the mm -hmm. roof and the sloping angles and even the ornation on the different towers that it's in wisconsin they'll call it beer steins <laughs> <laughs> yeah there it is closer to modern day copper probably this bluish color yeah very likely and i'm sure they've modified it over the years or removed a lot of the ornation yeah yeah this looks just down compared to that drawing we just saw and then people say that too well it's just a drawing well the drawing has to come from somewhere right so yeah well and, that... and with the drawings you know that it's funny how those almost seem and feel more accurate than a lot of the pictures that we look at from the time frame that's the really strange aspect about it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we definitely i think we're uncovering the intentional misdirection um, as we get, you know, as we peer into this stuff a little deeper. Yeah. Wow. is right. <laughs> that's a, that's a good way to describe it. This is, this is unbelievable. I can't even imagine being placed in a situation where you have to finish the top of this tower as a construction worker. You know, you hear about the, you hear about the iron workers, the Mohawk iron workers. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, those guys, really amazing climbers without the lifelines. But uh, I don't know. This, this is on a different level, all this type of stuff here. And finishing this up way up high in the sky in such a manner is absolutely absurd. Piece of cake. <laughs> okay, so we'll shift to the interior of this building. Woolworth Building, New York. Oh, yeah, here we go again. <laughs> two years. Remember, two years to build this thing. <laughs> Yeah, and the best part is they don't even try to have any sort of addendum where they say, but they spent another 10 to 15 years finishing the interior because that's what they'll tell us now when a building's delayed. They're still finishing the interior. Not the case back then, apparently. Well, you know, really, if we come back to this this time next year, they might have added an addendum. <laughs> <laughs> and they spent years, and here's the photos, and you'll have some nice sketch drawings of many people painting and working on these internal arches and columns and pillars. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll have friends and family members telling us, "See, I told you so." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's some nice ceiling work here by the elevator. And I suspect these, and then we're getting into like the little additions that they put in. 
And one of these is the architect. Let's see, this is a better one. I think they've added some of these into the construction. Let me see if I yeah, that one. looks like something that uh, the contemporary era would do to kind of put a laugh on all this other yeah. amazing beauty you see. Square knuckles, not very well. They should have rounded those off a little bit better. Would have been more convincing. And they probably couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Here's the architect, right? He's got he's got the whole building in his hands. That is just an absurd <laughs> the whole concept of that statue or whatever you want to call it, that uh, decorum is just absurd. It's, it's it is, isn't it? It's cartoonish. It's uh, very cartoonish. And, and yeah. you know it's meant to be. Yeah. Mm. It is. We're being we're being mocked for sure. Um this reminding me, uh, we got into the St. Louis Railway Station. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yep. This reminds, almost identical in some ways to what we saw there. Um, European deity. Remember? And, and it sort of repeats itself, too, in this architecture. Um, well, and, and these are the images that don't make any sense from any narrative that you're looking at. And this is what you'll see in all these buildings across the United States, this adherence that we seem to have towards the old Greek and Roman deities <laughs> all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like an homage. Here's the front entry. Like the, the, the level of detailing is, is off the charts on so many of these buildings. And we don't do anything anywhere near this these days. Cause we can't, I really don't think we can. So an interesting comment on uh, one of the videos and I don't remember who had made it, but it was pretty funny where they were saying that, well, now we just use styrofoam and tin and sheetrock and we get more for less. Like, do we really get more for less? <laughs> yeah. We get less for more. <laughs> yeah. Less for much more, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you, I mean, if, if you look at this and you can't, see see what's going on like more, that there's more to the story i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to tell you you stay in your stay in your comfort zone you know i think this is i just i just think it's it's a dead giveaway that there's more to the story as you look at these well, there's that uh, skylighting too that we see in many other buildings yeah those features that you'll see that amazing skylighting the window and the design with that it's no small feat right no so I have a few more buildings that I want to highlight. I had a um, viewer um, bring them to my attention. So let's see here. We're going to jump over to Hibbing, Minnesota. Is it Hibbing? Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, Hibbing, Minnesota. Nice little There's castle a, there. The high school. It's a high school. Um, oh, a high school yeah. castle. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> I know you might might think it's a castle because of all the crenellations and, but it's just a high school. <laughs> all right. A little bit about it. Um, built from 1920 to 1922, so that's a little later on in the narrative. Um, two year timeline. Two to revival. Having to uh, revival. <laughs> It is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you laugh. They're telling us here on Wikipedia. So I don't uh, know who you think you are to question that. <laughs> well, and, and that's just it. You know, I mean, uh, just look it up and it'll give you the answer. Okay. Well, I'm not yeah. going to question it, you know. Uh. Auto click. Yeah. Problem <laughs> solved. There it is looking and it's grainy, but it's, it's all I could find for an overview. It's possible some of these have been added on maybe in the, that time period. I don't know. Maybe not. The stack is old world. This is all part of the old world, I think. So the whole structure, I would suggest, is probably old world. And what gives it away is the interior. Oh, so. gosh. Yes. Because mm -hmm. we need something that beautiful and ornate for educational purposes. Remember a two-year time period. If we try to build a school, just a typical run-of-the-mill school here these days, and I know in my town, we're in several years, two, three years at least, to, to bang off a very typical plain school with painted walls and cinder block exterior. So modern day, mm. we can't do anything like this within that time period. So how are we to accept that this was done in two years in the 20s? <laughs> I don't know. And, and it's funny that they're not uh, obfuscating the account with the whole reference to Art Deco, which was supposedly big then. Even though Art Deco didn't really start until a couple years later, you've got numerous inconsistencies where they have buildings that were before Art Deco that mm -hmm. show Art Deco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? Well, that's a nice hallway there. Is there all coffered, you know, and capitals? And it's, it's ridiculous. 
lot of just work for high school just for high school <laughs> i don't know if bob dylan's attached to this place he might 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 have come up in hibbing i'm not sure i could be wrong on that but uh I did see his name pop up here again. That this is so similar to what we saw in the Jehoshaphat Cathedral, octagonal, mm -hmm. right? The rosettes, the octagonal rosettes. The same kind of symbols and the arrangement. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This will be the theater. We've seen a few of these, but <laughs> you, know. you know, and there, there's styling cues. This kind of reminds me of the high school I went to because it was a giant castle. And I remember calling it a castle and that was long before I had the eyes that I do now. I remember mm. thinking that because it was in this small town in the middle of nowhere, America. And mm. this high school went for an entire city block. It was crazy. And it looked mm. like this on the inside. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just a part of the narrative, right? And that, that whenever I think of sort of uh, the American high school um, ethos, I guess you could call it, and how Hollywood ties in with that, it's there's a romanticism there, you know, and then you have the jocks and you have the nerds and you have the cheerleaders and you have the, what are you going to do with your life? And all that kind of stuff. It all just seems like a, a dream, like a foggy dream to me as I, as I reminisce on it. Fast part of the program Mont high right <laughs> yeah 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 totally and hollywood's been all over it they're setting that narrative for us but uh always obscuring the truth of our past i think I'll just have to pile on <laughs> okay that's hitting um there's a few more i have we're gonna jump over to philadelphia broad street train station does this make sense? No. <laughs> That's really unbelievable, especially. What do you got there? Like a gargoyle figure right there in the corner? You see that? <laughs> uh, here? I'm, no, back to your left and back down. Okay. Towards the bottom, right there. Yeah. At the little corner piece right there to your right. There it right is. Right here. Yep. Right here. Like, what the heck is that? <laughs> uh, yes, there's a fifth face here, looks like. Oh. Giant. Wings. Giant gargoyle that we're just going to throw on the building for the fun of it. <laughs> well, at the time, it was easy to do that. Not now, cool. but it was easy back then. So. What was I thinking? <sighs> <laughs> uh, let's check a quick wiki on this. We got we got about ten more minutes of the old world before we jump into our second topic. Um, not the Woolworth Building, Broad Street Station, opened in 1881. This baby uh, closed in 52, demolished 53. So no timeline on construction, of course. It's uh, and why would you need that? No, it, it was just finished at a certain date, and then it's really you'd think these would be well documented, or should be, you know, but uh, there's no effort made or or any of that to uh, to provide that to to people, you know, the his, like the historical society is in many of these places no less than we do. It seems like sometimes just from our poking around online. Well, it's almost like they want to confuse what the account of the timeline is. That seems to be their intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an absolutely ridiculous building. This is also like a, a deal breaker for me um, as a to, for any sort of uh, conventional historical narrative. There's there's absolutely no way that this uh, this uh, falls under the umbrella of the history that they've given us. Yeah, you're going way outside the realm of reality there. Mm -hmm. There it is from the from a blimp, maybe. Here's the city hall, which is another story altogether. Philadelphia City Hall, which they couldn't demolish, even though they <laughs> wanted to. It would have bankrupted the city. That should tell you something. <laughs> Isn't that great? In the 60s. <laughs> there it is, really dwarfing the, the train station. But uh, not much on this as well. You, again, these things, they demolished it in the 50s. You think there'd be some sort of attempt bef before demolition to document these uh these places these structures this may be the interior but there's also another broad street station so i apologize if this is that station but it's still immense and old world so i threw it in there when you got that same view of the columns and of course that's what they would later call art deco or they would try to associate it with art deco it would seem mm -hmm. and it's funny how architecture has made it undesirable to be um to peer into the past right everything nowadays is flat stock flat paint hard edges plain plainness has become desirable in the world of architecture 
right? Well, obviously, by brutalist architecture. And the rich part is they'll say it's to save money. We need to save money. Yeah. Now let's increase the debt ceiling. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, here's a little little uh, juxtaposition. Here's what we once had, and here's where we are. Speaking of brutalist, so. 1960s urban revival right there broad street station yeah <laughs> i like that reaction uh let's see i have a few more before we get into the other subject matter oh, here's another one from a viewer i just wanted to share it this is richmond virginia main street station train station Richmond, Virginia. I don't think I've seen this one. Amazing. Uh, when do we know when this one was built? Yeah, I have a Wikipedia open here. Let's. Uh, here we go. Richmond Main Street Station, built in 1901. That's all we have. Again, a ghost of a story. Opened and built in 1901. There's no timeline given. Uh, not a lot of information, but I did want to feature it uh, just to bring it into the consciousness of anyone who might see this video. They must have put it on one of the lots that uh, the Union mortar rounds equipped with nuclear bombs detonated on and left the ground completely open. What? <laughs> <laughs> when you look at those Civil War destruction photos of Richmond, Virginia, and it looks like it's just been leveled by something horrific. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a, yeah, there's some early photographs of like nine-story brick buildings, the remnants of nine-story brick, brick buildings in the 1860s in Richmond, Virginia. It's like, what? They had nine-story brick buildings from the early 1800s? <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Just need a little bit of ingenuity and some hard labor and anything is possible. It, it makes you wonder, too, um, if this is what remained, what the heck did they destroy that we'd have no knowledge or visual evidence of, you know? Right. And that's something I'm trying to get into more is get a better idea of what it looked like in the distant past. And it's difficult. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's so it's like peering into a dream and trying to pick out something tangible. Very difficult. Here's some of the interior of this place. So again, the coffering, capitals, columns, very smooth columns, 1901. Hmm. Looks like many a state capital in the United States where you see these amazing elaborate columns and the ceiling and the archway and mm -hmm. I don't know how tall that ceiling is. Yeah, right. Got to be twenty. So yeah, twenty feet at least. Or at least, more. yeah, yeah, and more. Yeah, maybe more. Yeah, I think uh, it's funny when you get into this research. There's no such thing as boredom. <laughs> I I think you can go anywhere and just start digging out, extracting the uh, the BS from the narrative. Anyway, uh, there's so many levels to it as well. Really, yeah. So here's the modern day, and this again giving you that sort of depth of texture. This photograph, I think. This is megalithic block work right here. Oh, here, I'll, I'll just pull that comment off so you can see. Oh, yeah, easily. And it's that base foundation that you see in so many different locations where they can just throw out megalithic blocks. No worries. You can do it easy. Yeah, it we saw that. We saw it in that Milwaukee, the Paps building, too, by the bridge. Very similar to this right here in that first photo. Do I have it open still? Mm. Yeah, I'll show it if I can find it here. Almost identical, a little bit grainy, but you can see it here too, along the riverbanks. All the canal work, right? That's all just ridiculous stuff. All old world infrastructure, I think. Um, Michelle gets Michelle Gibson gets into a lot of that stuff. I really love her work. So much to dive into. Oh, yep. And she hits every detail really well, too. And there's just there's so much detail when you go from top to bottom on all these buildings. Yeah, yeah. And detail work is, is the most difficult aspect of construction. Structures can it really can be done by anyone, but the detail work is uh, is the next level. Last last building we're going to we're going to look at before we jump uh, switch topics. This is the Park Avenue Hotel in New York. I did just do a video on New York hotels, which are mind blowers. 
Yes. Why do you need all that kind of detail for something like that? <laughs> yeah. And there's our timeline for this structure, 1878 to 1927. So we've got 50 years almost, not quite, 49. Uh, the poor thing didn't didn't last half a century. And early on in the narrative. Or maybe it lasted a lot longer than we possibly know of. That's just how long it lasted in our contemporary age. That's right. Yeah, it's. I think so. Much older. Uh, you don't tear a building down of this stature in such a short period of time. Uh, this was standing for, for much longer than we have been told. So, and I just, something about the symmetry in this one really strikes me as well. Look, you could see the columns built into the architecture right around the windows. Like you can just barely make it out. The resolution's not great. We have columns down here, but columns between every window here and all the way going down the side too. Yep, just the, the different scaling with the columns that you see. You see smaller columns, you see display columns, and then you have the really large load-bearing columns. It seemed like they could do them all very easily. Yeah, and we're talking about circular stone in the mid-1800s. And I don't know if anyone's familiar with how the milling up of this type of stuff is done these days, how to mill these things up. But it, uh, <laughs> to pull off such a task in the modern days is very, very, very difficult. So... Again, one of those aspects to the narrative that uh, where the bottom falls out of the bucket, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, they'll always try to have their little explanations and facts that they say, oh, they could do it because of A, B, and C, and we have a really bad patent sketch for this machine that was available at the time. And that's how they did the milling. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every, I, I, love people, I love when people try to stretched for the explanation rather than stretch in the other direction and say okay maybe it's not such a stretch to say that there's something wrong with the story here instead they'll do the mental gymnastics to make it fit you know oh, oh and will they ever cheetah flips in mental gymnastics <laughs> okay shall we uh switch shift gears here to uh um what do we want to call it never really know what uh here, let me just stop screen share and I'll get that set up. You can the call melt. It reset evidence. You can call it apocalypse. Many different names. Cataclysm. I there like you go. that Cataclysm, one too. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Let's, because uh, there are some people in this community that are sensitive to this su subject, actually. Um, they're willing to dive into what we just did, but this is a bridge too far for some people, I think. Um, but. I think it's very important to get into this part of the uh, historical lie as well. Well, it comes down to just all the conditioning you've had for years. And while you can potentially break a portion of it, it's when you have to take the next step and want to go a little further. That's where it gets a lot harder for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just queuing them up here and wait one. Oh. Building suspense, aren't I? <laughs> hey, it's all good. You know, it's it's funny because I remember going to this area a very long time ago and walking through these structures or wow. natural structures, as they were called. And yeah, as as we look at them, I'll uh, reminisce a little bit. That's amazing. You've been there. Wow, wow. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I was uh, coming back from uh, a little bit of. Uh, work assignment that I had in the Middle East and we got to stop in Turkey and we went to Cappadocia and we didn't have any idea that these kind of structures existed. Now I'm thinking we're looking at Ukasar Castle right here. We are Ukasar Castle. Okay. You, yep. you can, yeah. Share what you know about it and your story, what, please. What they tell us about Ukasar Castle is that it was supposedly a Byzantine castle that uh, was built, oh, give or take a thousand years ago. How they could possibly know that? I don't know. But then you look, it's been subjected to some kind of terrible forces, but they'll say, oh, it's just natural erosion. And that's what caused this amazing melted appearance that it has. With an awful explanation. Uh, yes, especially when you can still see lots of detailing of remnants of structures, arches, and yet some of them are very beautiful and have weathered the storm, so to speak, quite well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my file will have the, the castle inter interspersed with the what do we call them? The fairy chimneys. These here. Yeah, that was the name the mainstream gave them, and 
you know, when, when you go around, so they try to say that the fairy chimneys here were not made artificially at all. There is no human presence in this. This is all natural erosion. That's what they say about the fairy chimneys. Honestly? Wow. Honestly. That's what they try to say. And then they say that people went in there and then they carved out these dwellings within them. <laughs> I, I would, what's the point of carving some of the, what's the point of carving this you know what's it, the point? <laughs> that, that's just it, it you know it, it just falls on its face when you look at it and when you go there and you actually touch this stuff th there's no way you can think it would be easy to carve this i mean unless mm. you wanted to spend the rest of your life trying to carve some of this stuff hey i need a really fancy doorway here and you know i'll spend about 10 years doing it because i got nothing better to do well it's quite obvious to me openings like this are just about to be dripped over and closed and this is I mean, I've done the research for a bit here, and it's, it's obvious that we have some sort of melting going on here. And it's just dripping down like an ice cream cone. Mm, and there is a way you can actually see these buildings really well without going there. And while it may pain me to say this, there was a really cheesy 1980s movie called Land of Doom. And I think it was one of those Italian flicks that was exploiting the Mad Max science fiction genre. And they filmed right there. And they filmed a lot of the scenes in and around the fairy chimneys and on the inside. And you can really see how detailed it is on the inside in this uh, cheesy movie. Well, how easy is this movie to find, I wonder? I think you can find it on YouTube, actually, because it's considered such a terrible movie. <laughs> what, what's it called? Let's, let's actually do a quick search. Just to Land see. of Doom. Oh, they have a new season. Oh, I think that's here. it right there on the, okay. uh, the full movie right there. Right here. Yeah, lots of reviews of it too. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that on my list of... Uh, I'm going to make some popcorn and... Uh... <laughs> I I, I recall, so the reason i know about this is back in my video store days there was a, a group of guys who came in and they were all about seeing the lead in this movie and i can't remember her name yeah that would have cost me back then but uh, they wanted to see the movie she was in it and i remember watching pieces of it and we just thought wow this is just such a cheesy movie Hmm. But then I don't know how I think I came across it about a year ago once I'd gotten in this research and I noticed on one of the images, the fairy chimneys. And then first thing that came to mind is, well, I've been there. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. It's melted buildings, melted buildings. Yeah. And it's in this movie. Yeah, that's it's worth it just for. Uh, and those are things that you can uh, you can screenshot as well to get those uh, into one's collection. Mm -hmm. before it becomes unavailable online. <laughs> yes. right. Probably didn't think anybody was going to be watching that movie anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, right. So here's the location, if anyone's wondering, on a uh, on a map search, the Uchisar area. And I've actually researched Turkey quite extensively in, in for, for old world cataclysm evidence. I've got a massive file on that. One day I'll bring that to the table. I'll bring you some of that today. But uh, So here's the location here. And what you're looking at with this file that I, I'm sharing is basically a, a bit of a wider area that I've grabbed from, not just the castle itself, but let's say this type of region. Okay. And this is really how I find a lot of my pictures is going through the, the world map, the Google world map, and uh, people share these and put them on there. So I, I like to grab them. Yeah, it just it brings me back to I think it was Planet of the Apes, one of the Planet of the Apes movies, the original ones, where you see images of melted buildings that was supposedly from nuclear detonations that looked like that. So that's what brought that to my mind as well. Interesting, interesting. Of course, it's in our pop culture. Yeah, and I I should be clear too. It's not just this small area. This this stuff can be found all over the place. It's not just condensed to this small region. If you do a search, you'll find it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'll show some evidence of that too. Even the even the structures here that people live in, um, we're looking at like a blend of. I think I honestly I think from the same time frame. What do you think? Yeah, it's probably the same time frame. I mean, there might be some additions that came in a little bit later, but you know, maybe some buildings were hit a little harder than others for whatever reason. You know, what whether it was some sort of plasma discharge or some other sort of weapon or technology that we can't possibly understand that caused the 
basic structure of the buildings to just melt, you know, whether it was some sort of microwave technology. I mean, who knows what they really had available? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really the unknown. We're really delving into the unknown, which makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Here's a good example of the in-between stage, the block work, and then the rock, if you can see that. Well, I think the block work you point out there, that's what just completely dispels any notion that this is just something from natural forces. Yeah, natural forces make blocks. Okay, what next? Well, that, that actually is the explanation in many places around the world. If we look at right angles, they're still telling us it's natural formations. <laughs> uh, yep, they love to say it. Okay. Very good evidence here of cataclysm, I would say. And I think here you see a lot more evidence of the blending too, especially with that uh, more or less intact arch in those windows there, but then next to the other buildings that have clearly been subjected to whatever force they were subjected to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say too, like, well, how do you explain that this is still in this state while this is in this state? It's like, I can't explain it. I'm just observing and pointing out the uh, discrepancy. I really don't have an explanation. When you try to walk it back and think about, okay, well, let's just say that that terrain looked like that when the settlers or whoever were going to build their city arrived there. Mm -hmm. Why would you pick that kind of area to build your new buildings on top of? How easy would that be? Well, you need to defend yourself from the invading hoarded, hordes of armies. That's that's the explanation. Yeah, right. Defense. Uh, it's Look at this one. Terrain. <laughs> yeah. That's Nestled in the, in the, it's interesting. This is really in between stage here. They are everywhere, really. Here you see it again. There. You just have to wonder, I mean, how extensive were these structures, these cities? I mean, how much ground did they really cover? And how opulent were they in their glory and their grandeur? Well, you know, sometimes I, I start to think that we may have we have may have an entirely terraformed realm that's been devastated through cataclysm. I don't know how many times, but you have to wonder what is nature. <laughs> sometimes my mind drifts in that direction. <laughs> yeah. I know, and then you know you see the the modern news, and they try to scare you with the current hurricane or tornado or earthquake, mm -hmm. and while they're very devastating events and they're terrible i'm not underselling them mm -hmm. you just look at the effects of the past and you have to wonder what could have done this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beyond our comprehension i think but uh we're definitely noticing it and then you do see a lot of this you can see here the vertical or sorry the horizontal lines this is something that repeats itself in nature as well right and uh looking like block work that's been sort of melted. Yeah, that uh, window way there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Comments. Yeah, it doesn't really. I don't know. Well, here we'll take, we'll check out a few more. They have the balloon rides. That's a common thing over there as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, you can't see the actual details so well when you're riding on a balloon over it. You actually have to be on the ground, and you see it a lot better. Whereas when you look at it from the air, it really does just look like it's the peaks of some really jagged mountains. Yeah, and then you can see the block work in here. Making no sense at all why you would ever want to carve something here. <laughs> like, there, there's, it's completely illogical. Completely illogical. Just get on my ladder, get my hammer and chisel, because I got nothing better to do for the next 10 years. So I'm just going to chisel away, and it'll be pretty. <laughs> well, no, you'll, it'll be several generations before you get finished. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be optimistic. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're hardworking. Yeah. It, it, really, it's embedded all into the hillsides as well. You can see all these openings, square. It's everywhere. This whole area, I think, was, was devastated and was um, structure man-made structure or intelligently made structure wherever you want to go with that you know is it a former version of ourselves you know you get into the whole fall the angelic fall the biblical fall you know from a higher state of being 
Is that what we're looking at here? No, it's definitely a recurring theme, so can't be discounted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this is just carved in there. They chose a location, but it was only really half of a <laughs> half of a hall they carved into this cliff. Apparently, we don't we don't have the space for the full hall, so we're just going to do the half hall here. Okay, <laughs> you just have to settle for that. <laughs> Got to use what we have. Hmm. Here's a good one as well. It's quite obviously melted. Um, I mean, I mean, the word melt, people have sometimes trouble getting their head around it, right? But you mentioned a plasma discharge of some sort. Um, something beyond our comprehension that can do, can do this to matter itself, the alteration of matter. Well, and that's the whole thing is the different theories behind it, whether it's a plasma discharge, it's some sort of cymatic weapon or sound weapon that we couldn't possibly understand that caused the internal molecular structure to just utterly decay and collapse mm -hmm. and something we were always told that we had with nuclear weapons but you don't ever see any evidence of it after nuclear detonations and i got to be careful when i say that because i got in trouble for you know saying that a little too directly before <laughs> is that right no, interesting interesting yes yes <laughs> I should probably be more careful in my channel too. I'm not very careful at all. <laughs> I feel like I'm being shadow banned. It's it's really strange, and it's as though there there are certain people who seem to be watched a little bit more, but you you can't really figure it out. There's no rhyme or reason to it, and what you can mm -hmm. say and what you can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of censorship, so I kind of thumb my nose maybe more than I should at it. Yeah, well, I, I certainly don't agree with it, you know, and if somebody wants to have a dissenting opinion, have at it. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, when we have to censor things and you really wonder. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want to say hello to everyone in the chat. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Keep throwing in your two cents and I'll keep uh, putting it up there. It's all uh, we're all just brainstorming here. So good to see everybody. Um, it reminds me of Lichtenberg. Are you familiar with the Lichtenberg fractals? It's been a while, but yes, I think I recall it. You see people um, doing it these days on a piece of wood to get that sort of lightning bolt effect where they burn. They use a battery and and uh, we'll give it that that look. But it seems, if you watch, the uh, electricity will follow its whatever path it wants to follow. So some areas will be left untouched and other areas will be... Um, fried by the electricity so i think there's probably an element to that concept that uh, that we're seeing with a lot of this devastation as well some sort of very advanced electromagnetic weapons that they possibly had or somebody did well this gets into a little bit of either the fasces or and the cannons two things that i've been researching a little bit what were the cannons really um and was the is the fasces the bundle of rods was that actually a weapon some people have theorized on that as well well when you see the drawings of it they try to make it look like it's just a bundle of rods with an axe but then you see the actual carvings and inscriptions of it on buildings and it really looks more like it's some sort of technology hmm. Hmm. yeah well we know that the old world civilizations were using a technology that um that we don't have anymore today. So it's very possible that a technology we're not aware of was used to destroy this old world. Makes a lot of sense. Look at this as a sheer, sheer mm -hmm. face. Yeah. Yeah. And just to respond to Eric's comment there. Yeah. I mean, mountain direct energy weapon, that might be one of the best theories of all, because there is a lot of indication that there are directed energy weapons, at least in theory right now. And, maybe much larger versions existed in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's all on the table and it's a, it's a good shout for sure. This uh, I've also looked into at the frying of the, uh, the circuit board. If, it, if we have the circuit board earth, like Michelle Gibson gets into um, and the circuit itself was shorted, short circuited or whatever that might be. So and perhaps an internal frying of the circuit board. Well, that makes just as much sense as the other theories, especially when you consider what forces you're seeing the effects of. Mm -hmm. I think the most important part is to, as we look at this evidence, is to allow it into our consciousness and recognize that uh, um, we have been lied to and 
I get into this a little bit in my videos, the uh, introduction of the science of geology, um, creationism, Darwinism, all that kind of stuff. The, uh, is it, um, oh, name escapes me now. Some of the founders of geology are all Roy Royal Society types trying to stretch out our timeline and make all of this um, fiction, basically. Pretty catastrophism, much. uniformitarianism, yep. catastrophism. Yeah. Wow, look at this. That's some detailing right there. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to expand this now into um, a region nearby in, um, I believe it's Armenia or Georgia. Let me just double check here. So we've, we've pretty extensively looked at this region of Turkey. And this is... I, I don't, I'm going to butcher it at Uplitschki, Georgia. <laughs> I cannot pronounce that. Apologies. You can't expect me to. <laughs> Which is just over here in this region. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, Tbilisi is very interesting. That whole region is quite fascinating. They have an old world section of Tbilisi, I think, and it's, it's, it's fantastic. But, uh, we're looking at sort of this region here, I believe. And I'll jump back over to those. And you're seeing the evidence of the same thing going on here. Actually, I think I can jump back here. Let's start there. This is a good one. Take a look inside there. You can see actually what we were just looking at in Milwaukee and New York. Octagonal ceiling. Yep. Can't deny it. It's right there. Isn't that amazing? So that may, begs the question, is this all from the same timeline or is it just um, a knowledge that comes and goes, right? We lose it, it comes back, we lose it, it comes back. Like I know you have your uh, multiple ages theory, right? Is this from a previous age, this devastation we're looking at and are the old world buildings that we looked at in the first half of this live stream from the latest? Um, you know, are, are these technologies rediscovered? Is that how this works? The cyclical nature, right? It's all questions that I have, I suppose. You know, rediscovered, or perhaps there's some group who retains knowledge. If you ever read the book Canico for Leibowitz, where they said that's what happened between quote unquote resets. That's a very eerie book to read when you consider the research that we're doing because that's the whole premise of it and it was a 1960s sci-fi novel so we're told <laughs> yeah that's interesting oh, of course and, and those are often written by people that are in the know right in in the uh initiated into the secret knowledge i suppose that's kept from the general public a lot it's of those just authors. a movie they'll never take it seriously yeah yeah so this all from that same region. Quite obviously, like the, we're supposed to believe that this is all carved. This is all quite obviously been melted, I think. Yeah, without a doubt, you mix the, the blocks. But then you also see the variance too and what's been melted a little bit more and what's still standing really nice and almost looks brand new in some ways. Yeah, and you, and you can make the case, and some people do, that this was put in after. I don't think so. Just this area here is well, sort of, I don't know. I Maybe, maybe some of this is, I don't know. This is all beginning to melt. As far as I'm concerned, you could see it's starting to sort of blob into this, you know? I just so. don't think it would make any sense though. I mean, if you're going to go in there and you're going to try to build on top of it, the question you have to ask is why would anybody do that in a contemporary era? You wouldn't uh, build a wall here if you saw an opening? <laughs> well, I'd like to think there's better things to do with my time, but you know what? Sure, let, you know, someone lays down the challenge and, hey, can you build a wall here? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Get the donkeys. Oh, uh, we have a good question here. Book name, please. Can you mention that the name of that book again? Oh, uh, Canical for Leibowitz. I don't know if I can. Can I share that? I've never actually. Uh, if you want to throw it in the chat. Yeah, I'll uh, pull it up. No problem. Okay, you, you can actually see here too, that's an, the remnants of an old stairs staircase here leading up to this door. Interesting. I 
And now we've jumped over to Armenia, which is all in the general, same general area. Uh, I can't pronounce it again. I don't know if you guys can see this. Knudzoresk, Armenia. I just totally butchered that, but give you a rough idea of where we're looking at right now, too. There. Very, all in the very similar region here, down in Armenia. But we're seeing the same evidence of the same thing going on here in Armenia. All right, I think I just got it in the comments there. Uh, okay. Yeesh. Look at that. Same thing? It's the same thing, really, right? Slight difference in look and greener. Definitely greener. But, uh, yeah. And then this is what you find in the in the hillside, buried in the hillside, and people will walk into these. There's, there's a YouTube channel where she does a little tour. And then you have hollowed out areas, basically. So <laughs> yeah. Easy to do, and it all makes perfect sense to a lot of people. Yep, right in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, look at this. Eh? It's all over the place there. I have a question here from Timothy. This research has made us question volcanoes, plate tectonics, weather, earthquakes, mountains, even what a rock is. Who knew we were going to question our entire reality? I didn't know when I was a kid that we would, we would go down this road. <laughs> <laughs> nope, me neither. <laughs> we have to uncover so much, don't we? It's amazing. And we have to be willing to accept uh, that the uncovering needs to happen. Here's a similar again. This is an older photo of that region in Armenia, but reminding me of the Turkey, of the castle there in Turkey. You have to wonder, you know, when these buildings were originally built and what they've been through. How long have they been there? That's a real question. Uh, in this state, do you mean? In this... Yes, because yeah. we have these pictures from this long ago. So how long ago did this event happen? When were these buildings originally constructed? Yes, yeah, it's a good point. You know, and uh, I know Michelle Gibson does have a rough timeline, about a four or five hundred year timeline where she sort of dug back, at least into the restructuring of our, or the resetting of our narrative through the nefarious, you know, bad actors, whatever you want to call them, um, stretching out throughout the realm with their, uh, with the new narrative, roughly about a 500 year timeline. She actually, I think, works it into the Philadelphia experiment in 1942, which I think is interesting, like a time schism. Well, it's funny because there's a lot of accounts that the Philadelphia experiment really happened. And I covered that on my channel during the Operation High Jump explorations. And it seems very clear that something did happen because you have the individual who told the story, then he recanted, then he recanted his recant, and then he recanted his recant of his recant. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> like if, uh, if you're if you're telling a lie, fine, you're gonna stick with it though. You're not gonna say, Oh no, I was lying all this time. Well, no, actually I was telling the truth. Okay, just kidding again. I was really lying. <laughs> <So that's laughs> <the truth about laughs> that. Yeah, credibility shut the window pretty quickly, which is po po possibly part of the reason there as well. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take you sort of, we're going to hop around for the last, we got about 20 minutes and then we're, we're going to try, try and cut off here at a reasonable time. But I want to share with you some more of my melt evidence, if you will. Stuff that I found, this is some of the best ones that I found from across the, across the realm. I think this is in Spain. So most of them I'll have a location, but a lot of them I won't. And we can oh, yeah. talk about the type of uh, effects that uh, we're seeing here. <laughs> you see this here? Yep. Like, yeah, it's, they, like it's melted, cooked out a little bit? Yeah, like it's crawling up from below, possibly, though. And it stopped at a certain point. That's, That's true, too. You wonder yeah. what was really going on there. Of course, they'll tell us, oh, they just had the battering ram and they threw tar on it, lit it on fire, and that's what caused that. <laughs> is that is that an explanation for that type of thing we see on castles? I can't, I can't begin to tell you how many times I've heard that type of explanation, especially in my in my early professor days. That's exactly what they'll say, and they'll go to their grave saying that. Wow, that's interesting. I've never heard that. That's so I appreciate that. That's really interesting. <laughs> this is in Zimbabwe. Yeah, Seems a bit odd. 
Yeah, you see the same thing there, and you wonder what the original structure that was a part of looked like. Mm, I mean, and this big uh, boulder effect, I, this is fairly prominent in a place in Portugal called Monsanto, I think it is, Portugal. Uh, so if you ever want to take a look at this type of very strange, massive boulders and then structures interspersed in between, that's, a, that's an interesting place to check out. Yeah, because lugging around massive boulders is no problem either. Yeah. Or even building between the crevices of them makes no sense either, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this is in uh, Yemen. You may be familiar with this, the gingerbread uh, style look in Yemen. Yeah, been one of the most uh, supposedly brutal yet uh, not acknowledged conflicts that have been happening for a couple of years now. That's right. Yeah, buried. They really buried that one. Yeah, and making no sense, right? This below there and... Yeah, more evidence. There it is again. You see the openings in the rock, and then so somewhere in between stage. This I think it's called Sana in Yemen. I'll sh actually show you for those that might be interested. In this area that we're looking at uh, down here, Sana. This area here. If you want to get into this type of um, these types of buildings, this is the area you want to search. And I've, I've, I have scoured the realm extensively as sort of my pastime hobby, my downtime. Um, I've mentioned this in other podcasts. Some people play solitaire to unwind. This is how I unwind, just collecting photos of the old world <laughs> devastation. This is India. Yeah, Amazing India fun. as well. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you're still seeing openings here. Also, the state of the block work, I think, is important to, I, I suggest that what we're looking at, these are not in their original state. They were not this shape or texture when this structure was built. And, and in fact, they have been altered through that uh, devastation or cataclysm. We've got some interesting stuff in the chat here. Visited Santa Bug Garden, 2001. Must have been amazing. I'd love to check that place out, really. Yeah, that was probably right before. The gingerbread uh, the City, East I got... think it's been referred to as. Yeah, it was right before the Middle uh, East. Timothy got... talking about Gdansk, Poland. Entirely mm -hmm. the brick roads, houses, bridges, walls, streets. Who made all of the bricks? It's that question that pops up over and over again, isn't it? Who made all the bricks? And there we go again. And we see a lot, especially in places like Iran, uh, Yemen. Um, we're seeing them in this state, not looking very mud-like. We see it also in uh, Central America, I suppose, maybe Mexico. Um, what I propose is, is we're not actually, they weren't actually built in the state. You can see the block work down here, the evidence of the block work down here and here. And this is actually post-cataclysm, the effects of whatever happened here. That's incredible. Wow. All right. Nice tower Tricky. there. <laughs> Let's keep moving. I'll try to go a few different locations. This is Languedoc in France. Again, are we to believe that this was built on rocky outcropping <laughs> or the official explanation that this is some sort of tar that uh, did this to the rock? <laughs> yeah, sure. I buy it. Do you? <laughs> you still there, Aurelian? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me now? All right, just quick mic check. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, there you are. Okay. Wow. Well, mm hmm. Don't have a location for this, but quite obvious. One of those big boulders. Yeah. 
yeah. So, I mean, it's very difficult to hypothesize what could possibly it makes you wonder, right? And when we get into the whole terraformed realm, when we're looking at, you know, boulders and mountains and streams and rivers, and and then you see an anomaly somewhere, and it just sets your mind wandering. Oh, that's a beauty. Look at that. Yeah. Somewhere in between, right? Like this is... This is in that region, I think, on the border of Germany, France. I did do a video on that, Nord. Oh, I can't remember now, so many. Yeah, all built during the time when uh, we were reliant on the agrarian culture and feudalism to sustain ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so it's quite clear there's something wrong with our historical narrative. We, well, we keep saying that over and over, but... It's just so, always funny to think about it when you see something like this and <laughs> you try to make sense of it. <laughs> it makes you wonder about, you know, that, that spell where you talked about the indoctrination, you know, that uh, the 20th century and the spell. It is definitely some sort of craft going on there, the spell over our consciousness to keep us from seeing. I mentioned this a lot, too, in, in my in the chats I have about this type of stuff. I've been an alternative researcher, I guess you could say, for a couple decades now, but I could not see this aspect of our past even though you know, and i was i considered myself open-minded i was uh yeah it's it's amazing that this is all of a sudden opening up like a flower almost this is this knowledge and information that's how i'm, I'm seeing it it really seemed to accelerate once we got past about i'd say 2016 2017 and then it just started picking up steam hmm yeah, so there's definitely a collective going on there as far as our ability to even digest this stuff, maybe, and to accept the lies of our past. No, I wonder what that used to be. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Afghanistan, I believe, possibly Iran. But you can see the block work that's turned into what we might call mud. Oh, Brayden here in the chat says the language is the spell, decisive and distorting. That's a that's a strong statement. I think uh, there's some accuracy there. The spelling, right? The language itself. A lot of truth in that, and just the fact that you're limited by what words you use, and then even the various languages that we have uh, across the land or the realm. Mm -hmm. well, that's a beauty. Mm -hmm. Look at that detailing yeah. there, and then one of those small columns. There it is right there. Again, we see it, right? Yeah. I, I think maybe Armenia. Not sure. These, again, you find this everywhere. It really is. The more you look, the more you'll find. You can see even in the foreground what remains of something like this, but it's completely turned into what we would call natural. Yeah, and they try to say, well, it was natural. Oh, wait a minute. We've got a turret and some windows there. Okay, it wasn't natural. <laughs> <laughs> it was built as a fort to defend from the invading armies, right? <laughs> yeah, because they couldn't just <laughs> bypass them. No, no, we got to take that fort. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is in Spain. This one really gets me to, um, again, you can actually see the lines here in sort of a, and it's it's a difficult explanation because people say, well, how come this is standing vertically and but this has sort of gone into this direction? And I don't have an answer for it again, but I just feel like it was all part of the same structure. So I honestly, I don't know. Well, I think that's one of the most important things to be able to admit and know is I don't know. Everybody always seems to think they need or want to have an answer. So here, let me get on Google. What caused this? Oh, OK, it was built on top of it. Done. <laughs> Yeah, right. We do, the ones who are quick to explain and give you the answers, the ones you have to be wary of, I think, for sure. There's a there's a good saying. Let's see if I can remember it. Uh, I would rather have um, questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. <laughs> <laughs> very, very applicable to this current age we find ourselves in. <laughs> Absolutely, that's sort of how it came up too with the with the. Oh, this is interesting too. If you have a look, you see the red bricks in here, and then you know, the rest of it looking like block work. So again, either you accept that this is this is some sort of renovation 
evidence of some sort of renovation with red brick and it was previously done with rocks or this whole thing was possibly made out of that and the state of matter was changed into what we now call rocks or blocks yeah it gets very interesting all this stuff prime evidence of it right there for sure mm -hmm. i'm gonna give you a few more and then let's uh we'll get to the wrap this up a few more visuals for the viewers and ourselves i suppose uh, i think this is in either jordan or syria all part of that nabataean complex yeah that's a kooky explanation in and of itself <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah wow yeah wonder how that happened and yeah i've heard I've see, heard this uh explained as like caramelization of sugar Have you ever see sugar caramelize you have <laughs> a bit of these little holes there is a similarity there sometimes right ah. you, yeah Anyway, it does look the same that's true some similarities and, and then i some of these I've, I've added into this file because you have the blending again of the red brick and then the big block work so it makes you wonder the original construction materials yeah this Timothy's adding here the global warming fossil fuels dinosaurs caveman evolution entire space paradigm the space paradigm really seems to be falling apart right now as well a lot of people are highlighting <laughs> you know oh come on now the, the Artemis mission didn't look convincing you know that great footage <laughs> of the moon come on <laughs> <laughs> okay you got me there you had they had me for a short while there <laughs> it, it really is amazing this get, gets back to sort of my hypothesis about how we're in the age of revealing all lies are being washed away whether we like it or not uh, is that what's happening right now are we part of that process i suspect that's the case they can't really keep the lies intact much longer can they well it seems as though it uh, accelerated rather quickly when they decided to give us more time to think on it fortuitously that's right <laughs> that's right there's some good comedians have done some good jokes of that over that era <laughs> They don't want us to do our own research, but they're giving us all this time to do our own research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of funny how that all went down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at this. This, this. this is absolutely absurd. This is in Turkey. This is in the countryside in Turkey. Um, like I said, if you look through the scour the countryside of Turkey, you're going to find this stuff everywhere, not just in that region we looked at. So I want people to uh, to know that it's not just localized to some small areas. This is realm wide and everywhere. Just random windows and doors and rock in the middle of nowhere. It makes perfect yeah. sense to me. This would be in India, this one. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll get to a few more. I do like sharing all this stuff. Oh, there's not much you can do or say about the stuff is just sit there and hypothesize, right? We don't, it is what it is. Well, the other thing you showcase by showing all the examples is just how prevalent it is. This isn't an isolated incident or even an isolated incident in one specific nation. This is all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very important for people, I think, to realize that. And that's why I, I, I grab from all over the place when I do this research. And there are buildings like this in uh, Arizona as well. I did a video on the Four Corners and... Uh, grand canyon and all of that all of the stuff going on in that area looking to me like the result of some sort of cataclysm that's a strange looking one yeah the, what's this all about here down here you know a little square window at the bottom almost looks like you have classic concrete blocks there yeah 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 right this is india again and you'll see this in india those very rectangular um looking blocks India is amazing. I have a massive file on it, and I, th I should condense it and do a video for people just to just to get the stuff out there. There's a good example of what was once block. You can tell it was once block. It's quite obvious, I think. Oh, beyond a doubt, you can mm -hmm. see the shapes easily with the lines, the vertical and horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. and I'll, if I had the location, I would share it, but. It all becomes a bit of a blur after a while. 
All right, let's find, pick one to wrap up on here. Well, this is on Turkey as well, in the hillsides in Turkey. Again, these are all over the place in Turkey, but I think we can, let's use this one as our backdrop to uh, finish our conversation here on a wonderful Monday morning where I am. Uh, quite hot this week. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I would like to thank everybody in the chat and anyone who's view watching um, for joining us here this morning on this live chat. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Aurelian for being here with me again. I always appreciate your input and the conversation that we have together. Yeah, it's a blast. Thanks for inviting me again. All right. I'll be watching your channel and I look forward to the next time we chat. Sounds good. Take, take care of yourself. You do.